in order to accomplish such purposes. Okay? Now, therefore, I, Franklin D. Roosevelt, President of the United States of America, in view of such continuing national emergency and by virtue of the authority vested in me by Section 5B of the Act of October 6, 1917, 40 Stat L 411, as amended by the Act of March 9, 1933, do hereby proclaim, order, direct, and declare that all terms and provisions of said proclamation of March 6, 1993, and the regulations and orders issued thereunder are hereby continued in full force and effect until further proclamation by the president. Okay, now, remember, we went back in and we talked about Title 12, United States Code 95B, enactment of the president and the United States Treasury. All right, whenever they sit down and did the Trading with the Enemy Act under under Title 12, 95A, which is Trading with the Enemy, when they did the 95B, they switched everything over to the United States Treasury, which went into the Comptroller. Now, remember, they're sitting here talking Federal Reserve notes, and we got into this under Title 12, I believe it was 411 and 412, that sit here and show that Federal Reserve notes only had one single purpose, and that was to stay within the Federal Reserve banking system, and it was not to come out here to the people unless it was for the federal agents of that time to, to deal with it, to carry it from one bank to the next. Now, okay. On your – Hold on a minute. On your dollar bill, on your $20 bill, it sits here and says, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. What's a private debt? That note, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Somebody's got to get a Black's Law book out and look up the word tender. Okay. The thing of it is, ladies and gentlemen, what we're sitting here looking at, what we are getting into, a lot of people only looked at one couple little sections here of the bankruptcy. They did not sit down and get into what we're looking at now because if we have international bankers that are receivers – because it goes in, and they say that they own all property. They own everything. How can you and I buy and sell anything that belongs to somebody else? Now, and, and if they are the receiver and receivership, they are responsible for all the debts. I mean, why in the hell are you making payments on your utilities, your property, your phone, your car, your gas, when they say they own it all? Then they have no authority to sell it to you, which is fraudulent conveyance, and it's also fraud in the inducement. It's a fraudulent contract, and they're obtaining money under false pretenses on something that they, that they own. But they're making you make the payments on the debt that they own. Okay. Now, getting into, let me go back and find it with what we're looking at. Trustee, because it goes in and tells you what a trustee is on Chapter 11, and it, it explains that the trustee is the United States trustee or bankruptcy administrator. The U.S. trustee plays a major role in monitoring the progress of Chapter 11 case and supervising its administration. The U.S. trustees is responsible for monitoring the debtor, the United States government, and possessing operating of the business and of the submission of operating reports and fees. Additionally, the U.S. trustee monitors applications for compensation and reimbursement for professionalism, plan and disclosure, statement, filed with... Stop right there. Stop right there. The word disclosure. Very operative word. What have they not disclosed? Pretty much everything. Okay. Now, Jeanette and I also got into this conversation. 1933, they did the bankruptcy. 
What also happened in 1933? Adolf Hitler. Uh, what about Social Security? The Social Security Act. But before you get into that, and we're still on the Federal Reserve, I have in front of me, the Federal Reserve is a privately owned corporation, okay? There's some sites here, uh, mathematical proof, the Federal Reserve caused the Great Depression. That would be in the 20s. And when did this start? What, 1913? Part one, mathematical proof, the Federal Reserve caused the Great Depression. Part two, Congressman Lewis T. McFadden's famous 1932 congressional address, uh, blah, blah, blah. Who owns the Federal Reserve? You're going to love this part. It says there's been much speculation about who owns the Federal Reserve Corporation. It's been one of the great secrets of the century because the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 provided that the names of the owners, the owner banks, to be kept secret. However, R. E. McMaster, publisher of the newsletter The Reaper, asked his Swiss banking contacts which banks hold the controlling stock in the Federal Reserve Corporation. The federal system is by way a private corporation number 62 domiciled in Puerto Rico. Gee, isn't that where the IRS is? Yes, it is. Okay. The answer to who owns the Fed and by proxy the entire USA, Rothschild Banks of London and Berlin, Lazard Brothers Bank of Paris, Israel Moses C. Banks of Italy, Warburg Bank of Hamburg and Amsterdam, Lehman Brothers Bank of New York, Kuhn Loeb Bank of New York, Chase Manhattan Bank of New York, Goldman Sachs, Sachs Bank of New York. Uh, in the secrets of the Federal Reserve, Eustace Mullins indicates that because the Federal Reserve Bank of New York sets interest rates and controls the daily supply uh, and price of currency throughout the U.S., the owners of that bank are the real directors of the entire system. Now there's more, one more paragraph. The shareholders of these banks, which own the stock of the Federal Reserve, Bank of New York, are the people who have controlled our political and economic destiny since 1914. They are the Rothschilds. Lazar Fears, that's Eugene Mayer, Israel C., Kuhn, Kuhn Lueb Com Company, Warburg Company, Lehman Brothers, Goldman Sachs, the Rockefellers family, and J.P. Morgan. Now, J.P. Morgan, the Rockefeller, and Warburg are major players in going back into George Bush a monster and uh, the Aid and Abed article where you can find out who really set up uh, the entire system and why they set it up. They set it up to do what they're doing now. That's the international bankers have committed treason against the United States and everybody in this country. And it goes back to the Queen of England, who is handling our Social Security, who is responsible for our Social Security. And this all goes back to the Bank of Vatican, which is one of the largest banks in the world, which is probably who's running all of this, making it very secret, which is why $30 million of assets have just been taken for a money laundering operation. And it was a large portion of that was headed to the J.P. Morgan Bank in Germany. In Germany. And J.P. Morgan and Prescott Bush set this all up to take over the United States as, uh, as Germany, as Hitler's Fourth Reich. This is not a joke, folks. Okay, now, like I said, did you keep leaving out one thing. We discovered it was worldwide on a lot of other countries. It was not just the United States. It was other countries that was forced into receivership into the Federal Reserve because what the United States did. Right, right. That's exactly correct. That's what, that was what I just read, that the Western uh, nations, uh, 1933, the year most Western world nations were forced into bankruptcy. This goes back to the Rothschilds, which goes back to one of the papers that I put out again today, um, that I put in the I, – I started putting just a portion of it, but I put in the whole damn A Country Defeated in Victory Part 2, written by James Montgomery, where it has the letters written from the Rothschilds in 1863, before the Bank Act of 1863, showing that they were going to be printing the banknotes to look so close to the greenbacks that no one would understand the inimical harm that they would cause, but carry the brunt of the burden. That means 
We're going to screw you over. We're going to make all the money on it. We're going to stick you with the bill. That's, that's exactly what that means in no uncertain terms. Okay. They knew it. Okay, now, Jen, Jeanette and I sit back and we, we I sit down and ask her a question. Okay, if the international bankers are the receivers, they own everything, and the United States Congress is trustees which are now responsible to pay the debt to take care of the funding, let me ask you people a question. How can the banks come to us and sit down and say they need us to bail them out they're going to the debtor, they're going to the government, and sit down and say, debtor, we need you to bail us out. Then the trustee and the receivers have just committed a, a bankruptcy fraud. Now, it gets worse. If all of the countries in all of the world, has, or at least the Western nations, and it doesn't list them all exclusively, um, if they're all in bankruptcy and it's running through the international banks, that, that definitely, inequivocally, without question, runs through the Rothschilds with intent. And I've got a list of all of the banks that ran through the KBC Peel Hunt on the debt for equity exchange plan in February 2007 that, that ran through all of the banks all the way through London, which then in turn, that's the House of Rothschilds and the Rothschilds headquarters, which takes us back to Jacob Rothschild, which then goes to the Queen, and then all of a sudden, that's all running through the Vatican. And the Vatican names him, actually the Pope, self-proclaims himself as the vicar of Jesus Christ. And the vicar means instead of, or viceroy, meaning that Jesus Christ isn't here anymore, so I'm going to take his place, and I'm going to name myself as ruler of everything. And it's all mine, 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 mine. I own it all. And we're going to force the world into bankruptcy so that we can put it over to my pocket because I run the world because I say so. Now, basically, that's it in a nutshell. And I'm explaining it so that anybody who's having a difficult time following this should be able to get what it is that we're saying. It's run into the banks. They force us into bankruptcy. They're supposed to be the trustee. They're supposed to be the receiver, which means they pay the damn debts. It doesn't mean, well, we'll pay the debts, but we're going to rob you to do it because I still need to have my limousine and my private jet, but I, I want you to pay for it. And then we're going to screw over all the money, and then we're going to need you to bail us out again anyway. Okay, now let's go back in with what we brought up on the show here a couple weeks back, where Jeanette brought up about Christopher Columbus and the Vatican and their decoration of what the Vatican told Christopher Columbus. Well, what happened in 1492 when Christopher Columbus was sent over as the Viceroy by Her Majesty's, and it lists all of the different countries, Spain, several of them, sent over here specifically on a mission to set up this whole colonization and report back to them all of the court cases, everything, back to all of these Catholic uh, majesties, so they can follow what we're doing. He was, he was the way and the reason it started over here, taking over all of the native indigenous people that lived here and setting up the colonization. It wasn't that he just got lost. He was on a mission from hell from the Vatican and all of their lieutenants and their employees. Now, that's under, you can find that on the, the Avalon Project. Look for Privileges and Prerogatives of Christopher Columbus in 1492. All right. Now, this was done in 1492. The Vatican gave him a charge to come over here. The Vatican claimed all jurisdiction over everything in this country. Correct. And now, name... in 1600s, uh -huh. England started colonizing and bringing corporations over here. What does the charter say? The charters, when you want to get to the beginning of all of those 1600s charters, I've got them from 1603, 1608, 1611, 1635, and the Delaware Charter of 1701. Those you can also find on the Avalon Project. Pennsylvania, the first, second, and third uh, charters of Virginia, North Carolina, they're all on there. Um, they all state greetings from God, the King of England, France, and Ireland, okay? You have to understand how to read that. God is not God 
the king of Ireland, France, and uh, England was naming himself as God because he had the authority to give life and take life away. And what they were doing was sending the adventurers and the planters. Now it's not Johnny Appleseed coming over here throwing seeds, kids. The adventurers and the planters were stockholders and corporations and people coming over here setting up colonization in America. And the words New England should really grab you differently now because New England isn't just New England. It's New England. It's England, but it's a new place because it's actually going to be a new head start over here. We're going to call it New England because over here we got Old England, but it's awful small. So we have to stick all our people over here. We're going to set up colonizations as for-profit corporations for the crown of England that that goes back into the king's contract with the 13 United States, which this country reneged on, but the king forgave the interest. But he never forgave the debt, which is still owed, which is probably taking us back to the international bankers that are now trying to claim the debt, and they're using all of us, which is like four, five, six generations later, responsible for a debt on a contract we didn't sign. But they're using the argument, well, we don't have to go by the Constitution because we never signed that contract. Really? We didn't sign your debt either, so kiss off. All right. Now, with what, with what we have said here and brought up, her and I, Jeanette and I have taught, 1492, Vatican claims all material rights, all land, everything. 1600s, the queen, the king of England comes over, claims all rights on all land, all fish, all gold, all silver, all trees, everything. 1933, employees of ours filed bankruptcy and turned it over to international bankers, which now claims they have ownership, and we've got two previous owners that nobody bothered going to to ask permission to buy, sell, or anything. Ding, 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 well, ding, ding. Well, let's go back to go back, well, just a second. Go back to Nostradamus 500 years ago when he predicted that in the end, no one would know who owns the houses and the fields. Well, folks, that's what we're trying to explain to you right now. They're buying, selling, stealing, conniving, backstabbing, underhanded, transmitting, trans transferring and fraudulently conveying anything they can get their hands on. They're robbing Peter to pay Paul, to rip off Mary, to sell Mary back over to Paul, to pay back uh, uh, Peter. Now, like I said, what we're getting into tonight, people, is is just a, a line of thought of something that has never came out to all of you at this point in time because nobody got into anything this deep. Okay, so what I okay, so to confer on this uh, trafficant issue, because it was all um, Speaker of the House, but nobody nobody could actually get any documents on this bankruptcy of 1933. I got a hold of the Library of Congress this morning, okay, and what I got from the Library of Congress, uh, I spoke specifically with them. And I asked for the Emergency Banking Act of March 9, 1933, 48 Stat 1, Public Law 89 through 719. And uh, I, got, I got it from him. And it's also entitled, uh, To Provide Relief in the Existing National Emergency in Banking and for Other Purposes. And the other document that I needed was the HJR 192 that you hear Rod speak of frequently. And that's the 73rd Congress in session June 5th, 1933, which I obtained. And it's also entitled to assure uniform value to the coins and currencies of the United States. That's volume 48, page 112 through 113. The first one is volume 48, both documents, and they're both 1933. I do, in fact, have those. Uh, Rod's got a copy of them. I sent that out to you, Harvey. Carl, you got a copy as well. I uh, cannot put PDFs up on the blog, but I do have them. Uh, let's see if I can bring one up here. This is the 48 Stat 1933. It's an act to provide relief to the existing national emergency in banking and for other purposes. And I'm reading this right off of the congressional record. 
Okay, this is public laws of the 73rd Congress. Okay, of the United States of America, passed at the first session, session, which was begun and held at the city of Washington in the District of Columbia on Thursday, the ninth day of March, 1933, and was adjourned without, without day on Friday, the 16th day of June, 1933. Franklin D. Roosevelt, President. John N. Garner, Vice President. Key Pittman, President of the Senate Pro Tempore. Henry T. Rainey, Speaker of the House of Representatives. And this goes into the bankruptcy. I it's, it's see the standard document that everybody pulled, but they, don't, they did not go in and get into the Congressional Act of what Trafficka was sitting here saying. They did not get into the, the Congressional Records of the 13955, which we need to get into, nobody's ever got into or ever pulled the Chapter 11 court record to see how it was written. Everybody forget all this. The only thing that they've got into is what Jeanette sitting here has talked about on these PDFs. That's the only thing people are getting into. They're not looking at a bigger picture of what we're talking about here tonight. Well, Rob, this is explaining that they always refer to as the act of October 6, 1917. They are intentionally withholding the terms and conditions of what that act is. It says right here, Section 1, the actions, regulations, rules, licenses, orders, and proclamations heretofore hereafter taken, promulgated, made, or issued by the President of the United States or the Secretary of the Treasury since March 4, 1933, Pursuant to the authority conferred by Subdivision B, Section 5 of the Act of October 6, 1917, as amended, are hereby approved and confirmed. Here's Section 2, Subdivision B of Section 5 of the Act of October 6, 1917, that's your 40 Stat L4411, as amended, is hereby amended to read as follows. And here's what you're going to need, Rod, you're going to love it. Paragraph B, during time of war or during any other period of national emergency declared by the president, the president may, through any agency that he may designate or otherwise investigate, regulate, or prohibit, under such rules and regulations as he may prescribe by means of licenses or otherwise, any transactions in foreign exchange, transfers of credit between or payments by banking institutions as defined by the president and export Hoarding, melting, or earmarking of gold or silver coin or bullion or currency by any person within the United States or any place subject to the jurisdiction thereof. And the president may require any person engaged, stand by, I lost my place here, in any transaction referred to in this subdivision to furnish under oath complete information relative thereto, including the production of any books of accounts contracts, letters, or other papers in connection herewith in the custody or control of such person, person either before or after such tra some transaction is completed. Now, what does that tell you, Rod? Okay, this goes back in under this Title 12, 95A and 95B, which takes you over to Volume 48 under Statute at Large, 1933-1934, on that 112 pages that goes in and shows where the President turned everything over to the United States Treasury, and the United States Treasury turned everything over to the Comptroller of Currency, where he is responsible for the debt, because under this HR 13955, where the, where the United States Treasury is not to sit down and get any compensation. The bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, we're putting all the pieces together, and we're just getting started because I don't have all of it tonight. We're just hitting the highlights of this for you people to get a different point of view, a different look at what they did, because it just wasn't the United States. They did this to other countries. And we've got... And on the line here tonight, I'll guarantee you that they're sitting here listening. 
they were not aware that they got drug into this. And if you go back and check, or they would go back and check, they would see that their constitution was overthrown like ours was. This is why with what Chadet and this other lady has done on putting this website up on land, rights, and farming, with all of these international hits from all of these for, all these foreign countries, with what we are exposing, with what we are talking about, we are now pulling international interest. It is for us to sit down to educate us, the people, to get in, to understand what's going on, so we can start standing up in these courts, start addressing these issues, but we're also putting this out to the international level because they have the ability to bring them into their courts and prosecute them where we may not see the 